Hi, this is Rochelle from Live in Vibrancy, and today I'm going to talk a bit about um, why it is that thinking about your ex often won't cause them to come back. Um, and I understand that the confusion is uh, we all know of the power of thought and probably most of us have thought of a friend or thought of a family member and then that person reaches out or you run into them or they um, they show up on your doorstep. Uh, I taught a, a friend of mine to manifest and she was in the grocery store and that was near my house and she was thinking like, that she was going to see me. And sure enough, I had this like compulsion to go to the grocery store. So we bumped into one another. Or you can think of a coffee and someone will bring you a coffee. But just because you can think of a friend and they call you doesn't mean that your ex will. And this is why. So I want you to ask yourself, when you think of a friend and they call you, are you caught in that mental loop, thinking about your friend, having the inner conversations with them, willing them to reach out, wondering when you'll see them, why haven't they called you, maybe even analyzing the past and thinking and thinking and thinking. And for some reason, it's not happening. And so you continue with the thinking and the thinking and some of us even cross into obsession or hoping or waiting. And I know that it's not really, you know, good for the you, my YouTube <laughs> channel to say this because I occasionally make YouTube videos, but are you watching YouTube videos about how to manifest your friend to call you or your grandmother to call you? No, you're probably not. I mean, maybe you are. I definitely have maybe found myself distanced from friends, and then I did get caught in that analyzing the friendship and maybe some angry conversations and then wanting to will them to call me. And then there was that internal battle, but I definitely wasn't watching any YouTube videos on how to how to make it happen. Um, and generally, I was it was a lot easier for me to just let it go. And so it's probably pretty easy to think that about your friend or your grandmother to get them to call you. Chances are pretty good the answer um, to all of the ob obsessing and all the, you, that you're not doing that. And so for some of you, you've maybe bought into the misconception that more is better. And especially in the case of your ex, this is not true. In the case of energy, this is not true. In the case of thinking about something, this is not true. Uh, this is actually, Overall, I would say there's a lot of places in life this is not true. This is not true with sugar. This is not true with sunshine. This is not true with all my favorite things, wine or chocolate. <laughs> it's not true with your manifestation either. <laughs> so here are some reasons why. When you've been in a relationship, there's already like that le level of energetic intimacy. So thinking and thinking of your friend is likely gonna block them from reaching out because when you get used to something, you become immune to it. Have you ever put on perfume or cologne and soon enough feel like it's worn off because your olfactory system has become desensitized? Or have you left the TV running constantly in the background and eventually your attention goes elsewhere and the TV's just there and you barely even notice it? You might not even notice the sound. When you're thinking and thinking and thinking of someone, this is what's happening. You are the TV or you are the perfume or cologne in this analogy. And as I've talked about the power of getting embodied and grounding, when your awareness is up here, that's when you're most susceptible to be pulled into other people's energy or to take in other people's energy. And the thing is, most of us spend our time up here. And so that's when you have the least control over your own energy. That's when you're the most in your head. And that's when you're the most easily triggered. Um, and the least of your energy is actually in your body because it, your awareness is up here and your energy is in your awareness. I mean, you do have energy in your body. It's running all your systems. But I'm talking about like your conscious awareness energy. It's up here. And so most of us are not present, like I said. We spend most of our lives with, with our awareness up here. I'm definitely guilty of sliding into that. And so we're conditioned into this. Um, when you go to school, you're not in your body because 
there's like playtime and then there's work time. So if it's playtime, if my body says it's playtime, that's really uncomfortable for me. So it becomes a natural state for us to disassociate and go up into our heads. And so this is why people are easy to manifest if you learn to ma manage your energy and your perceptions. Because the majority of people are living in the unconscious. This is where the unconscious is. Your awareness is outside of you. When you're conscious uh, and you're embodied, now you're doubly conscious because you're not only conscious of what's happening around you, but you're actually conscious of what's going on inside of you. You would not believe the number of people that I work with that when they, when we start to work together, they say, wow, I really had no idea how much stuff was going on in here. And most of them are really living conscious lives. So embodiment is a really powerful tool. And that includes manifesting a specific person because now imagine, sorry, I'm getting off track. So now imagine that your, your energy is up here because we all do it. Like I said, me too. And now you're also hooked energetically into someone else and you're letting your energy seep towards them constantly. So not only is your energy not really in your body because you're here, but now you're also over there. It's literally like, imagine you're a waterbed and you're leaking water like that, how much energy would you expect to have to be able to create with that particular subject? So if you've watched any other videos I've made, you know that energy is like one of the most important aspects that I focus on. And so now I want you to consider the energy between that person and you when it ended. Was it positive? <laughs> Heartbreak rarely is, so I have my doubts. Maybe it was. I mean, I could be wrong, but maybe the relationship ended. Um, but if the relationship ended, I mean, it was because you were out of frequency. Um, you and them, you were no longer in the same frequency. And that's why it ended. So you can't be caught up in the same space that you are now, missing and needing and waiting and thinking and thinking and thinking because chances are good when it ended the same feelings that are driving that were also in your relationship. You just may not have been aware of them because as I said, people are really surprised when they actually start to get embodied how much is going on inside of them that they're not aware of. That's the point of disassociation is so that you're not aware so that you don't actually have to feel the breadth of your human experience because it's not always awesome. Getting embodied is a little intense. <laughs> and so... You might tell me that you're not, you're not caught up in that negative energy, but if you're attached to the outcome of them coming back, I assure you to some degree, you still are. Um, there's attachment anytime you're not okay with the idea that you may never have it. And attachment always breeds suffering to some degree. And so when you're considering attachment to outcome, the first thing you need to recognize is that they were attracted to you at the start of your relationship. And that version of you was focused more on your own life and less on them. And that's attractive. That's highly attractive. That's essentially a lot of the foundation for letting go. So don't stay stuck where you were when that relationship ended. Um, and that energy, when your two energies were out of resonance. Because what do you think happens if you're still there when they come back? Um, a little story about me I'll throw in that kind of demonstrates this, I think. So I had a boyfriend when I was in my early 20s um, and I adored him, like adored him. And we broke up and it took me a really long time to move out of that. I would say probably two years. I wasn't emotionally available to anyone. I wasn't, in fact, probably until I met my husband, I really... I didn't really date because I was constantly comparing everyone to him. I was still hooked into him. And it wasn't until, um, well, I guess maybe not all the way up till I met my husband, but you know, that was the next person that I didn't really compare to him. But I, I spent a really long time really sort of co constantly gravitating back to wanting that back in my life. And the thing is, um, 
once I finally let that go, I remember it, it was a summer and I went, we went over, I live in Alberta. So we went over to BC and we had a lot of fun. We did, um, we were camping along a lake, my girlfriends and I, and it was such a fun time. And I didn't even think about him one time. And we met other people and I met someone that I might actually sort of be interested in. And while I was away, that boyfriend, that old boyfriend called my house. <laughs> my sister answered, um, I wasn't there. And it was literally because that was the first time that I hadn't really wrapped my life around thinking about what I'd lost and wanting to get it back. I was actually really enjoying my life in the current. So I just kind of want to land that there for you. And then I'm going to kind of bring, come back to that at the end. So I want to kind of talk about other ways, um, other examples of how when you're feeding your energy to someone, what your thought energy, your emotional energy to someone that's not there, um, it's not only have they become desensitized to you, but also um, you're demonstrating a, an, a, an, a lack. So I have a car. Before I had a car, I thought a lot about a car. I thought about where I was going to go. I thought about what color it would be. I saw myself in it, all the things. Now I have a car. Ask me how often I think about it. <laughs> yeah, when I'm going to drive somewhere, that's it. Because I have a car. So I don't have to think intensely about car ownership. Just like people with money don't walk around telling themselves, I am abundant, I am abundant. They just don't do that. They might on occasion sit back and just think like, wow, my life is amazing. I have so much abundance. They might. A lot of them probably don't. Yeah, I think so... The, this kind of is less to like throw shade at affirmations and really more to demonstrate the energy difference in the, those two situations. Over-focusing on something is a subtle focus on lack. So now let's go back to that perfume cologne example and take it one step further because I'm not done there. <laughs> so thinking persistently about someone causes desensitization. Whether it's your grandmother or your friend, it doesn't matter because we're all connected energetically. I know you think that we're all separate, but we're actually not. Um, so, and, and I'm going to talk about this because I actually did follow through and I did make content when I was in Austin. So, um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm getting off topic. So it, it desensitizes them. And with people you've been in a relationship with, that desensitization is heightened. First of all, because when a relationship ends, likely there's been an emotional disconnection by the, by the leaving person. So already that's a slight barrier. Pro I promise you it's not one that you can't get through, but you certainly aren't going to get through it continuing what doesn't work. So now, um, you're, now you're not the perfume or the cologne your underwear. <laughs> Think about your underwear. It's so intimately connected to you. It's with you all the time that you put them on. And unless you get like a wedgie or something, you probably don't think of them again, right? So instead of the TV, you're your heartbeat. How often do you really notice your heartbeat unless you're focusing directly on it where there's a problem? You, rarely, you probably rarely notice it, but it's there all the time. And it's like this if you are thinking about your ex because of that level of energetic intimacy that you have. And so if you're persistently thinking about them, visualizing and otherwise trying to call your ex in with your thoughts, you're the heartbeat. You need to draw your own energy into yourself. And this increases your magnetism. This is a real thing. Try it. Uh, try to ground into your body and get present and just go to the grocery store and watch how it affects the people around you. Better yet, do it the next time you're talking to someone. Get really present behind your eyes and watch their reaction because nobody is present in their body. So unconsciously, people become aware of it. They're not sure about what they're looking at, but they there's a shift in them. And so not only that, getting present and focused in your own life pulls your own energy into yourself. And that gives you more available energy to create. 
And also people who are passionate and focused on creating their lives in a powerful way also draw others in. I mean, this is not a lose situation at all. And when you're retracting your own energy into your body and into your life and not letting it leak into the past, you become far more expansive. Plus, in the present moment, everything exists. Nothing is known. And that's where the magic is happening. So retracting your energy is actually something um, that teachers on using consciousness to create uh, teach to their students um, so that they can create a pull of people towards them to create desire, you could say. And that's not quite the whole process, but it's, it's the underpinning foundation of it. You need a level of mastery of your own energy that you're at least not letting it seep into the people around you, that you are pulling it into your body, that you are demonstrating your inherent value by not giving it away to others, by not hooking it into somebody else's evaluation of you. And so be present and focus on your own life and you will notice that the people around you will change. Your reality will shift. All right, I hope that was helpful and I hope that um, helped a few people understand why it is that um, it's important to begin to learn to shift your focus when you notice it going outside of you back inside. Because like I said, creation is internal. It comes from within.